Okay, we're going out live and as soon as you're ready to go, Daniela. Right now we're just showing a slideshow. If you just let me know. Okay. Well, welcome everybody to Optics. I'm Roy Smits. I'm an astronomer from the Netherlands. And I like to participate in events that combine art with astronomy, like this event. Um, this is actually part of an event uh, called uh, A Day of Creativity and Curiosity. And I think that's just to the artists who uh, make this possible. So maybe you can say a little bit about yourself and about the event uh, today. Okay. Um, hello, I'm Ayane Parkin. I recognize the face in the audience. Um, I'm one of the artists, um, lead artists of the Creativity and Curiosity Project, and we're exhibiting in the gallery, the main gallery, and we're here to talk this morning. So our project as um, visual artists is to create a body of artwork through conversations with astronomers, cosmologists, planetary geologists, and all fascinating space researchers um, across the UK and internationally as well. We are exhibiting this, this work um, in various venues. I'll pass you over to my colleague. Hello, and um, I'm Julie McFarland, and I'm the other lead artist on this project. I'm um, yeah, very delighted to be here. It's like the storm bound, the storm bound, which is lovely. <laughs> and it's very nice to be part of the optic. Thank you. So, yes, we are here in the Stornoway, the Isle of Lewis in Scotland, in the wonderful auditorium. So, just to give people a bit of impression, we have an audience here, um, but we also have a live stream online. So we have to talk into this microphone as well as the microphone over there. It seems to work uh, pretty well. Um, so let me continue to introduce all the participants of this event. Uh, so next to me is uh, the artist who invented the visual moon balance, which we will see uh, during this event. Uh, and here is the balance. Maybe you can say a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Roy, and thanks to everyone here in the panel and in the public and everyone connected remotely. Um, it's been really a pleasure to do this panel together with scientists, artists, archaeologists, anthropologists. I, I, it's, it's super interdisciplinary tonight. Um, so, yes, this project is a, a project, a very dear project of mine that I've been uh, presenting for over 10 years. I think this is the 11th year of uh, office. And every time there is a new gathering of people, and what I love so much about it is that it really brings uh, people together. So technology becomes a means for people to uh, talk to each other and uh, share thoughts, ideas about the moon, about the cosmos. And um, so the, the project began um, when I approached a team of radio operators at the Queen Hill Radio Telescope. Uh, 2009, and I presented this proposal for a live performance during which we would be sending images to the moon and back in uh, real time, evolved into optics, and uh, it was also a bit of a breakthrough in uh, both amateur radio technologies and uh, probably the arts, I would assume, uh, because apparently sending images to the moon and back had never been done successfully before. Um, my proposal. So uh, it's been really a great exploration uh, of technologically and artistically for me. Um, I would like to thank also Paul, who is also in this program on the uh, Wild Signal podcast, for which I'm also an uh, occasional host. And um, I'll pass the microphone uh, back to Roy. Okay, we'll just go ahead with the introduction because we have quite a few people, both here in the panel, but also remotely. Um, so we have a colleague, uh, Sonwar Amaoui, so maybe you can say a few things about yourself. Thank you. So my name is uh, Amaoui I'm an astronomer at the University of Birmingham. Uh, my research is about finding uh, exoplanets. Those are planets that orbit uh, other stars uh, than the Sun. And I've been working uh, with artists for a long time and recently a very fruitful collaboration with Curiosity and Creativity, Ioni and Julian that are here present. And uh, the festival here, so we were uh, here last year as well. And it's a pleasure to be back. Great. It's a beautiful festival. This is the first time. Uh, Liz, maybe? Hi. Uh, hi, I'm Liz Singley. I'm a photographer and an anthropologist. And uh, it's a real privilege to be here as well. It's my first time to the festival at the Stornoy. And I've had the opportunity to be exploring the interactions between artists and 
physicists and astrophysicists at the University of Birmingham for the last two years. So that's how I come. Thank you very much. So we have several people uh, remotely uh, showing this around. Um, so we're going to do a visual moon bounce, which means we're going to be emitting radio waves uh, to the moon. The moon is going to reflect those waves and we're going to receive them again. So we need two uh, radio antennas for that and two radio operators. And uh, they have to be both in Italy. Uh, so one is uh, Nando uh, Pellegrini. Uh, so maybe Nando, uh, you can uh, say a few words about uh, yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, my name is Nando, you heard it. <laughs> I'm living in uh, northern Italy. Uh, Sorry, Nando, to interrupt you. I would just like to see Nando on the screen so that people also here can uh, see Nando, uh, because I think he's also going to show his uh, antenna. I believe he's on now. Uh, is that Seconds, so we still see ourselves. Oh, okay. uh, Fine. From my point of view, that's more, much worse than before, but <laughs> that's my opinion. <laughs> uh, I was saying that I am uh, an amateur radio since uh, life by now, since when I was at the secondary school. I've been uh, passing all the steps uh, as amateur radio uh, up to when uh, I landed uh, on the moon, uh, let, let's say so, uh, uh, which is not easy with our uh, uh, tools, uh, with our uh, equipment, uh, and uh, so it's very challenging from the, the uh, amateur point of view. Uh, I, and I think also Mario, we are very proud of uh, participating to, to such uh, an event, uh, and uh, we hope uh, it will go in the best possible way. Um, maybe more uh, <laughs> uh, 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 later. Uh, uh, if uh, you have any question during the, the show, please uh, feel free to ask, uh, and uh, we'll try to, to answer if, if possible. Uh, back to you, Daniela. I'd like to just add something about um, Mario, uh, about Nando. So I know you have a 10 meter antenna. Um, yes, uh, if you like, I can even show to you. I need uh, to make uh, uh, another connection uh, to Zoom and use uh, my smart uh, phone, if you like. Okay. While you do that, we, uh, we move on to uh, Nando. Okay. By the way, also the audience here, if you'd like to ask questions, just ask them and we can pass them on to. Uh, well, we can answer the question. Um, so, Mario, Armando, and Natali, can you maybe uh, say a few things about yourself? Yeah. You on the screen. Uh, am I on the screen? You want to put me on the screen or whatever? Yeah, this is Mario from, uh, I'm located in the central part of Italy, in the green Umbria, right in the middle of, uh, of Italy. Uh, I'm going to receive the, the, the image that uh, Nando will, uh, will send to me. I have uh, a much smaller uh, thing uh, compared, to, <laughs> compared to Nando. My dish is, uh, is a five meter dish that you can see. I have uh, a camera on, the, on, on my dish, so a light camera, so you can switch on the, on the dish whenever you want. Of course, now it's dark, but it's still uh, beautiful to see. I'm ham radio operator since uh, 1970, so many, many years ago. I was uh, a semiconductor guy working for many international companies like Texas Instruments, was the main one, and some Chinese company. Now I'm uh, enjoying the, the, my retirement and uh, working hard in uh, ham radio and in uh, radio astronomy. That is uh, my passion and the passion of Nando. Uh, so we enjoy writing programs uh, to receive pulsars and so on. So very, very happy that you asked us to participate and uh, we will try to do the best uh, to share with you the image that we will receive uh, in, uh, in real time, actually. And of course, we are open uh, to, for any question that you can have. You can see here the equipment that uh, I'm using for receiving. All the computer has switched on, everything is ready and the dish you can see on the other screen. Thank you. Great, looking forward to see that. Uh, so, Julia de Miranes, uh, you're also an astronomer. 
uh, no less uh, astrobiology. So maybe you can say a few things about yourself. And hopefully we can have you on the screen. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. Hey, great. Nice to nice to virtually meet everybody. My name is Julia De Marinas, and yeah, I, I call myself a an astrobiologist and science communicator. And right now, I'm a research associate at the Breakthrough Listen Labs. Um, here's my product placement at the University of California at Berkeley SETI's Research Center. So part of my job is to listen for others out there using large radio telescopes such as the Green Bank Telescope uh, and the Parkes Telescope in Australia. And I'm leading a project with the group um, called the Moon Bounce Project, where we are using the moon as a natural reflector, just as you all are about to see, of radio waves to analyze our own terrestrial signature, our own radio signature, what, what we sound like to an ET. So that's what I do. Wonderful. Uh, so from the University of Maryland, we have uh, Douglas Barrett. Uh, can we see you on the screen and maybe you can say a few things about yourself? Great, yeah. So um, I am uh, an artist and a scholar working in the areas of music and contemporary art. Um, currently working on a book on post-humanism and experimental music. Um, so how have things like AI and robotics, uh, but also space travel and radio astronomy um, changed our understanding about what it means to be human and then sort of how have artists and composers um, used these fields to reflect on those changes. Um, one of the chapters is on Pauline Oliveros' work Echoes from the Moon, which consists of balancing voices and musical sounds off the moon um, using um, Earth, Moon, Earth uh, communication. Um, and so uh, Daniela was one of the uh, uh, organized this set of recent performances of Echoes from the Moon. Um, and that work was also, I, I think, uh, a bit of an inspiration for optics as well. So um, that's sort of how uh, I, I got introduced to this um, uh, milieu here. And I'm just really excited to um, be a part of it. So really looking forward. Thanks. It's just amazing that uh, we can have so many people from all over the world at such an event. It's fantastic. Uh, so from astronomers around the borders, we also have uh, Andrew uh, Fasekas. So maybe we can have you on the screen and uh, you can say a few things about uh, yourself. <laughs> Takes a bit of time, but uh, last time we did as well. Okay, yeah, so I can say about uh, what I have here. Uh, so Andrew is a communication manager at Astronomers Without Borders, a stargazing columnist for National Geographic, and is a syndicated contributor for television and radio, known as the Night Sky Guy. He's also the author of National Geographic book Star Trek, the official guide to our universe and backyard guide to the night sky, and is the co-creator of the world's first augmented reality planetarium experience, Night Sky Odyssey. Uh, so yes, it's uh, wonderful to have him, but I don't see him at the moment, but maybe we'll hear from him uh, later. Uh, we also have a David. Uh, can we hear from you, maybe? Um, so um, there seems to be uh, some people are maybe not behind the screen, but um, I would like to uh, just stay with Nando because Nando is back, and I think Nando, are you ready to show your antenna or your technical setup? Yes. Because that will lead us very smoothly to send in the first image. Um, go outside, so just uh, be patient. Uh, can you see uh, the, uh, the second screen from there, just to check it? We, we still uh, see your main screen. Uh, I think I shared the screen. Yeah, I see. Okay. So that's the station, that's the inside uh, where I am now. Just a uh, sh short view. I have to go outside. Hopefully, it will be. Uh... So, this is something that I really love about amateur radio. This, uh, each um, amateur radio, I know I have a, now a very large network of friends in amateur radio. 
they build this equipment uh, themselves. So it's all pretty much handcrafted. And uh, this amazing antenna by Nando is also being uh, created by himself. And it's pointing right at the moon. <laughs> it's beautiful number, so really clear, clear <laughs> as we like. <laughs> the sky seems to be clear. <laughs> okay, great, thanks a lot. So, um, Andrew and uh, David, I uh, hope you're back there. Um, and I would say as soon as Nando is back to his control room, maybe we can send the first image that I'd like to introduce. This has been uh, submitted very kindly by the entire staff at uh, here on Lanterre. Was it and okay? Uh, <laughs> did you see the, 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 the dish, the homemade dish? Uh, homemade, I, I say that, Nando. Uh, I did explain it made by you, by... Uh, so let me call, uh, let, let me close uh, the connection, which is uh, maybe overloading uh, my slow... Uh, uh, So, Andrew, would you like to say something? Uh, would you like to add something to the bibliography? <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think my, uh, my mic is finally fixed there. Hi, guys. So great to be with you. I'm in very snowed in Montreal, Canada, joining you guys. Um, it's, this is something that really is dear to me. I'm, a, I'm actually a, a space art collector uh, for many, many years. Uh, so I find it's something that's so inspirational, I'm talking about art and the intersection between science and art. You know, it's so intimate, especially in today's world. I think it's even more important that we have this. I work a lot with, uh, I know Daniela actually through uh, Astronomers Without Borders, where she's the astro art director uh, for our program there, for our astro art program. And we have Global Astronomy Month every April. And at Astronomers Without Borders, what we do is we really try to share the wonders of the universe, the love of astronomy, and using astronomy to bring people, communities together around the world. And one of our most successful programs has been working with Daniela on, uh, on, on doing uh, radio bounces off the moon and, 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 and having people send in their artwork, their ph photography, uh, and and allowing people from all corners of the world really to participate in something like this that's truly a global kind of event. And, you know, we all share the same moon. We share the same stars in the sky. You know, we may be in all these co different countries scattered across the globe, but we all do share this one thing. We can look up, you know, here it's still a bit, a bit sunny for me here. The sun is going down here in Montreal, Canada now, but in a, in a very short time, the full moon will be rising. And that's something in your skies, where you are out. If you head out of, your, out, of, out of the auditorium, you can see that full moon in the sky. And it's amazing to think that with <laughs> this event that we're doing there, we can actually touch the moon. I think that's incredible to think about. And that the fact that the moon is 1.2 light seconds away, one way, we're actually traveling back in time when we're looking up in the sky. Even the moon is at such a distance from us that it takes light one way to get there and the radio traveling at the speed of light, 1.2 light seconds, right? Uh, that's the distance. And then another 1.2 seconds to, for that signal more, to come more back. Than that. Incredible. It's more than that. It's 2.5 go and uh, 2.5 to come back so uh, totally incredible <laughs> it's great to have you andrew fantastic so daniel is gonna uh, describe the first images we're going to send yes i already uh, said it's uh, the staff at Anlonte. Uh, so as soon as you're ready nando uh, nando and mario i see them as the pilots the, the, the... do you want me to show that one uh, the original, yes, please, Paul. So we first see the original image while Nando starts sending the... Shall I start? The, the very ready. ...the waves to the moon. <laughs> uh, so this is the photo received. Right now, the, the, this image has been scanned and sent to the moon uh, as radio waves. So we should be seeing the, the reflection of the image in a few seconds. 
So it might be nice to explain to the audience here and maybe people uh, streaming a uh, little bit more detail what we're doing. Um, so it's possible to send radio waves into space. And radio waves carry information. And we know radio waves from sound because we use sound on the radio all the time. So we're familiar with that. Um, but you can put any kind of information into these radio waves. And the project that Daniela has created puts images into those radio waves. So it's information, a digital information that constructs the image, put it in a radio wave, we send it to the moon, the moon will reflect back part of those radio waves, and we can receive it back here on Earth, and reconstruct the image that was sent there. So it really is, as Andrew says, we're touching the moon, we're sending out this image into space, and it comes back after it has touched the moon, and that path takes about two and a half seconds. And of course, we lose a lot of the signal. When you send it to the moon and back, you don't get the whole image back, there's a lot of uh, noise added to it, uh, and only part of the original signal is still there. That makes gives sort of a nice fingerprint of the fact that it has touched the moon. So I, I think there's a fantastic project that's been created. It's wonderful to have been part of this uh, many times now. Okay. Just wondering what's happening to the image. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we are ready to receive it. Um, this technology actually uh, is based on the slow scan television, which is a, a technology that was used in the 60s by NASA. So, NASA used this technology in the analog form for receiving uh, images of the astronauts from space. Um, so, it's Pretty similar. The difference is that this is a digital version. So we will see the image loading up line by line by line on um, uh, Nando's, uh, on Mario's screen. And uh, it takes about a minute before it's completely uh, visible. So many of the speakers would like to add something or have questions, feel free. So here it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you see the image? Can you describe what you see? Mm. Um, uh, not, I, not, not, not good enough. See, okay. No, so, not good enough. Uh, not good enough. Uh, we, okay. we need to try again, Manando. Mario, because we, this is a media art festival. So we love noise and we love distortion. So if you can please enlarge the image um, as much as you can. Uh, I would like to tell a little bit about the noise. So this image. Uh, looks a bit scruffy because it's traveled approximately 800,000 kilometers. So, uh, if you can maximize it a bit more, yes. Start that again, Nando. Yeah, as you can see on the screen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got some problem in synchronizing this time. Now you see. Uh, okay, no, no way to, to let it start say? again. <laughs> Maybe go with the next image. Ready? Wait a second, wait a second. Okay, try again. <coughs> try again. They sending the image again? Yes, uh, they keep sending the image until it's uh, received. So it's really like uh, grabbing <laughs> a very faint uh, radio waves. Um, okay, Mario, I think we see something. If you can maybe make it a little bigger. Okay, thanks. Starting to see something. Now it's better synchronization. Oh, excellent. Okay. What do you mean by synchronization? Just to make... Uh, synchronization means that my computer needs to make the scan at the same speed of uh, Nando's computer. If the two are not synchronized, that means that the signal is not getting through, then there is some disalignment. Let me show, share with you what uh, the other one. Okay, um, I'll explain a little bit the signal. So when we send uh, images to the moon, we uh, send them as radio waves. 
And when the image returns, uh, radio operators don't apply any filter to... This is a little bit better, huh? Excellent. No. This is much better, thanks. So um, they don't apply this any... This is a little bit better, yeah. Any filter. So all the radio activity or the radio waves that are crossing the cosmos between uh, the space between the moon and the Earth at that moment uh, are going to be swept, uh, absorbed by, let's say, the, uh, the image as it returns uh, on Earth. So this contains a lot of also radio uh, radioactivity um, that is happening. Uh, Okay, thank you, uh, Nando and uh, Mario. So I would say let's also move on to the next image as we keep uh, maybe the panel going. Uh, okay. The second image is by Gillian McFarland Boyle. And um, maybe, Gillian, you want to ask we, why we send the image to the moon? Maybe you can tell the, 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 yes. the image. So uh, these are images that are created by leading large. Um, Sink fleets out in either my garden or another significant geographical spot, and I leave them for uh, a lunar month, and then I take them in and I ink them up, and then I print them. Printing the process. So each month I get a very different surface painted, and I'm trying to gather together the um, the whole year in, in, in visual data. Yeah. No. <laughs> so I, I think it's being submitted, and uh, we can have a look uh, what uh, comes through after the mountain bounce onto the moon. It looks a bit like the moon, right? It does that, look, uh, yes, I like it. Mm -hmm. yes, that, so is any of that intentional, or is it just like you just let it go and see what happens? Yes. yes. So did you have any uh, expectations uh, when, you, when you do this project? Well, I think because it's circular, mm -hmm. it kind of automatically think of it being moon-like or planet-like. Yes. And, uh, and I think the first one I did happened to be... Uh, Okay, you know, so I, I did it for the moon, so it just looked very good. Um, yeah, so some people might see the moon in it. Uh, for me, it looks like Mercury, to be honest. Oh. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what you think. What do you think? Uh, do you also agree it's Mercury, or you have another constellation in mind? <laughs> yeah, any surface that is uh, created or textured, uh, the moon or Mercury, I don't mind too much. I, I like the moon. Uh, I think it's more familiar to the eye. That's too bad. Thank you, Mami. So, uh, yeah, do you like to add something? Yes, I would like to actually um, ask uh, Julia, uh, who is there. Um, uh, and um, I know she's been working a lot with Moonbars in her research, but uh, listening to the radio, the radio signals. And I'm just wondering if she can um, relate somehow the noise of the images to the noise that uh, she receives in her um safety work so how does that relate to the safety work uh, are you asking me daniela For, uh, julia i was paying attention to what mario is saying to me we, we, we have some problem uh, uh, it's not synchronizing uh, very well i can share with you what i'm receiving but the the, the, the synchronization is not beautiful. Let me share with you what I'm seeing. The image is there, but it's not... Uh, okay, Mario, I'll start you again. See? Uh, you see, the image is a little bit because the synchronization did not happen at, at, at the right time. So, as you can see, there is almost half of the half of the of the image. No. Okay, starting again. Uh, okay, I see. Starting again, Nando. Uh, so you plan to go spin it now? Yes. It's not now it's much better. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let me set, let me set, Nando, try again from, from scratch. Eh? You see, it's not, it's not starting automatically the, the synchro. Here you can see the image, you see this, this, uh, this bright, uh, 
track that you see here, this is the signal of Lambda. I can also share with you the sound. Yes, that would be nice, uh, Mario. That would be nice. Thanks. Um, and can you maybe make the image a little bigger, please? Um, so we see all the details of the pixelation. But we are not happy. Nando, let's try again one, once again. Nando. Try to start with anybody. We are just actually very happy with the image. <laughs> just a second, Nando. Wait, wait, wait a second. No, no, wait, wait a second, Nando. Stop. Let me start again. <laughs> Okay, go. Okay. Now I make it a little bit bigger. Now, now the, the synchronization happened, and uh, as you can see, the image uh, did not happen at the very beginning. So we cut uh, the, the, the beginning of the image, uh, but the image is there. Maybe you can hear in the background the, the noise, uh, actually the sound of the image. We can, that's fantastic. How does it sound like you? Well, given the last uh, presentation you had, it's really interesting. <laughs> Okay. Yes, the sound. Can you hear the sound? Yes. Yes, we do a year little bit of it. It's finished. Like it's a fax machine, basically. Okay, this is totally good. Yes. Uh, next one. I think, uh, okay, thank you, uh, Mario Nando, uh, that's great. I'm, is Julia there? So, Paul, can you maybe show Julia for a moment? Uh, I would like uh, Julia to tell a little bit about her work as a scientist with uh, this technology, which is so versatile. Uh, then, uh. Okay, you're here, Julia. <laughs> we don't hear you. Oh. Try again. How about now? Good. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, so this is actually really cool to see live because this is the kind of um, observations that we're doing with the Moon Bounce project at UC Berkeley with the Breakthrough team. Um, and I think that Daniela had a question about the distortion. Um, we don't, we don't uh, put our signals back into a digital form to see an image or, or listen to it. So this is kind of a treat for me, but because uh, radio waves disperse. Um, the signal back is obviously going to be dispersed, and this and it's just cool to actually see how much of it was retained after the moon bounce. Um, and when you showed your live screen of the signal peaking, that's kind of the signals that we're seeing when we're when we're looking at the data. We just started looking at our data. We took about forty eight hours of moon bounce um, data look for, of course, not these intentional moon bounces like you are just doing right now, but the unintentional radio leakage from all over the world, or at least where our telescopes are pointed at the time. So how do you use this in the safety search for extraterrestrial intelligence research? Great question. Yeah. So if we're out there looking for signals that are above the noise so that we know that they're not from natural phenomenon, any sort of anomaly, um, we, we are looking for ourselves, basically. So we need to know what our signals are doing. What do they look like? Um, so that's kind of how it ties into SETI. What do we sound like if we're out there looking for others? Um, but yeah, more importantly, I think we're at an interesting transition. So this project, the Moon Bounce project, um, has been done in the early 80s and again in 2013. So it'd be really interesting to see the power level. How loud are we emitting um, over time? Because as, 
as you all are doing right now with this digital. We're emitting, we switched more from analog TV, which were very loud radio signals, to digital back in 2005. I don't know if everyone remembers those commercials, like get your, get your digital TV box today. Um, but that signal is actually a lot weaker with the same, same information, but uh, digital signals are, are less powerful. So we're, as, a, as a planet, we're trying to see if we're actually becoming radio, more radio quiet. Thank you. So, so move on to the next image. Uh, that's um, Ioni parking, uh, mm -hmm. solar race. So oh, no, that's beautiful. I love this painting. Thank you. Maybe you can say a few things about <laughs> it. Sure. Um, this is easy. Yeah? This, this is very easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this painting, uh, Solar Resonance, is in the current exhibition here at Atlantia. Um, and um, it was inspired from conversations I had with Dr. Helen Mason, a solar scientist from Cambridge. And she was talking about the secreted plasma, the loops, contorted loops of magnetism within the convection zone of the sun, and um, uh, it, clearly this is a, was a subject that affects her deeply, and she was passionate in her transmission of these ideas. So, uh, fueled by this inspiration, I created this uh, painting, which is, um, uh, yeah, it, it, um, the surface initially, it looks, there's a homogeneity to the surface, but as you look closer, you begin to see the tendrils of light movement and restlessness. It is a sort of seething image um, of deep intensity um, and it's the beginning of a, of a series of these. But when Daniela asked about projecting, um, transmitting images to the moon, I felt, you know, projecting a, an image that is uh, generated from a solar image um, would be an appropriate one to send to the moon. <laughs> Well, the soon moon, of course, gets a lot of sunlight, but it never actually got a picture of the sun itself. I think. Okay, no. It's beautiful. So, can we uh, see the transmission? Coming in. Not beautiful. <laughs> there it comes. Not even red. Not even. <laughs> <laughs> When, the, when there is no strong contrast, uh, the, the, it is pretty difficult to synchronize. Actually, this is not a digital uh, image, it's an analog image, so there are tones. Uh, so the tones is, are even more dispersed uh, com compared to a digital transmission. So if there, if there are not strong contrasts, it is pretty difficult to synchronize. And in this case, actually, the contrast is, is very low. We have seen as a background of... Uh, of red uh, that uh, the system interpreted as a background of yellow, actually. <laughs> again, Mario? It's, yeah. Try, try again, no, no, no. Let, let's see. <laughs> we, we have to bounce everything twice okay, before we get it. Okay, what do you think? Okay, so what do you think? <laughs> um, completely different from the original painting. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I agree. It's a bit hard to, uh, to make out that uh, it's a vision thing, uh, but try it again. Okay. So I would like to also connect a bit again with uh, Dag, who is in the panel, and uh, he briefly mentioned that um, Mumba uh, has been used, for example, by um, a well-known uh, experimental composer called Paulino Oliveros in the uh, 1980s. Okay. And, now, uh, now Oliveros. Uh, Oliveros uh, made a series of performances uh, during which she moved out to in real time sounds from her accordion. And also at the end of each performance, she had people queuing up uh, to send their voice to the moon and receive the reflection uh, by a, a telephone. And uh, the other side of the telephone, there was a radio parade, just like today, uh, who was uh, sending and receiving. The, the voice. Um, so as soon as we receive this image, I would like to also um, hear from Doug a little bit more inside about this um, uh, pivotal performance that has been inspiring uh, for sure my work. 
And last year, we also col I collaborated with Polino Oliveros' trust uh, to make a, a performance that combined her work with the office. So that was a very interesting experience. Thank you, Daniela. Um, so we get to see part of your image, at least. Uh, are you happy with it? As you can see, the, the, it's losing the, the synchro, and the, the, the red image is uh, it's shifted. Maybe the system will try to, to, to hook again on the synchro. Now you see it's like uh, shifted on, on the right. That's the problem with the, with the images with low contrast, because again, it's not really, really a digital image, it's an analog image. So the, the difference in tones is not so strong, and so for the system it's pretty difficult to find the, 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 the right uh, synchronization with the original computer. It's nice, it's not the same of the original one, but it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, well, this is our idea, but it's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. Okay, shall we move on to the next image? Um, Daniel? Well, um, yes, I, I would like to connect it uh, also again with the DAG. Um, um, <coughs> so, um, if maybe we can have DAG on the screen yeah. uh, for the moment. Okay, this is the next photo. Uh, but I, I would really like to talk a bit more about this technology and, and the arts. So uh, I know you're writing about it now, Max, so please tell us. Yeah, yeah. So um, Paulina Oliveros, uh, as Daniela just mentioned, created this work called Echoes from the Moon in 1987. Um, so she was working with ham radio operators, um, you know, really just kind of putting this stuff together. Uh, and, um, in, in, you know, in, in, in um, small town in New Hampshire, and, you know, she just had a few different instruments. She, she is an experimental music composer kind of coming out of the um, uh, post-John Cage um, tradition to a large extent, but I think in many ways sort of uh, really um, uh, charted her own path uh, through um, music and, and art and, you know, was very interested in, in technology, um, very interested in um, space exploration and, um, you know, really thought about listening. And, you know, I think what's sort of, what's sort of interesting um, to, I, to, to me and I think what, what was very interesting for Oliveros is how, the, you know, the sort of the metaphor of listening um, also really connects up with you know, the practices of radio astronomy, but, you know, also then, you know, I, I, I think uh, practices like the search for extraterrestrial intelligence um, and, you know, the sort of idea that we're, we're lending an ear in a way um, to the cosmos. Um, so she did this, the, the, she did a few performances of this work called Echoes from the Moon. Um, uh, one of them was, was 87 in New Hampshire, and then a couple of them in um, California that were networked through, throughout the U.S. Um, and then uh, two of them, no, sorry, uh, two or three of them in Europe um, in the 90s, um, working with uh, several other artists there as well. And then um, since, the, uh, since 1999, I think Daniela's kind of networked performance of uh, Echoes from the Moon has been um, the only subsequent realization. I, I suppose one, one thing to sort of tack on to this is just I think that it's really interesting um, to think about uh, Oliveros' work specifically in the context of um, music and, and composition because it's a form that can be um, repeated. So um, we can do this work many times as, as we want and you know it could be performed uh, centuries from now and what would the technology be like you know what what would what would the relationship between moon balance and SETI be like in the future very good thank you Doug. can we maybe see the image uh, from Jill Smith because I love the text it says uh, you will love to the moon and back and that's going to be a little ritual right so that's uh, image number four 
And um, yes, when I normal, when I ask people, what would you like to send to the moon about? So I get all kinds of images. I never apply any censorship. I we literally send to the moon about all kinds of photos. And I think this is the, for me, the appeal of this project is to um, also go beyond uh, established aesthetics and uh, not apply any filter in terms of what is suitable for an art performance and what is not. Uh, and I really enjoy these aesthetics that tell a lot about just the intimate, in, you know, they're very intimate sometimes. They, they talk about uh, people from all walks of life and from all around the world, uh, sometimes wearing costumes from their culture. Um, and uh, that's for me what is really beautiful about it. And, um, and the moon applies these aesthetics anyway to all these images that you just saw. <laughs> so uh, when you're ready, Nando, Mario, Nando, we, we are uh, ready to see the result. Uh, no, number four, already done. Oh, oh, beautiful. Okay. Not uh, bad, not bad, this one. As you can see, when there are strong contrasts, uh, it's much easier to synchronize, so we are closer. This is much uh, clearer. It is. This yeah. is a really good image. Oh. <laughs> That's fantastic. Maybe we can try again uh, so that I can see in real time, Nando. Uh, which one? This one. Okay. We can't spend too much time repeating images because we still have okay. a few to go through. They but, uh, started automatically. You, you can see the image starting uh, and forming. The system now started automatically. That's a good sign, means that uh, the synchro was there. So the quality is much better now. So you can see even some some of the of the writing on, on the right side. Some some. Um. For me, this is what is also interesting about this technology, is the fact that um, we are so exposed to high-definition images nowadays, and these images that uh, load up gradually, line by line, and take minutes before gaining their complexity, I think brings really back the value of an image, what an image means um, in our culture. and. Um, and I often say that because these images are bombast, um, they make me think about what an image um, is. Um, in, so an, an image by itself for me is a sign of magic. So as soon as you take an, in, an image, it becomes already past. So an image is by definition um, a representation of the past. And um, seeing a high definition image some, somehow is contradictory because uh, our memories are never so sharp or so you know, bright. So uh, somehow this pixelation brings back some of the corrosion that goes, up, goes on in our brain. <laughs> as soon as we create an image, there is a continuous uh, overlap of new images. Um, this, you are also working a lot with images. I wonder now you saw a little bit, you're new to this experience, and uh, you just spoke earlier about Moonbounce this morning. And I wonder uh, to you as a photographer and uh, anthropologist, how does that, what kind of thoughts is triggering to you? <laughs> yeah, so I'm not a scientist, this is like magic, a little bit. I'm not quite sure exactly how it's working. I guess many other people are thinking similar things. Um, I share that sense of fascination with mm, interrogating the images because I think we are so accustomed to seeing high res, high res definition images and we absorb them so quickly. So, actually, interrogating them and breaking them down and really kind of like trying to unravel what they mean to us is really fascinating. And the anthropologist in me is very curious to ask this lady on the front row who actually just sent that image um, to the moon and back with love. What it meant to her to see it sent back. Is that the okay? Um, 
Yes. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Can we maybe have the panel on the screen? But go ahead. Yeah. Would you like to you like answer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. What should we put? Yeah, um, what would they like to see that image sent? There's obviously yeah, um, I mean, I feel very emotional. That was me and my grandson, um, and uh, you know, an image that was done by his mom uh, and sent to me on the canvas. And it's like, it's incredible that the, the words have been turned into an actual reality. That it has actually gone, that love has gone to move back. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so should we move on to the next one now that the antennas are warm and working properly? <laughs> so we are going really fast. Uh, we have uh, Tommy attending the Rangers Soccer School in December, and this image was sent by Claire. Uh, I wear my glasses. Uh, this is coming by pretty good, huh? This is beautiful, and uh, uh, is uh, Claire here? In the... is oh, there. hello. Hi, Tommy. <laughs> okay, well, uh, they're both here, so they just went to the moon and back in uh, two and a half seconds. And they look pretty good uh, despite the distance, so excellent. <laughs> pretty good. Very good. So, so Tommy is looking very sad. Very happy to, uh, to see his own image. <laughs> Okay, the next one I think was also sent by a child, uh, Kayla. I, I think I only have her own surname. Um, so if we can maybe see the next one. Yes, that's a moon. I often receive images of the moon taken by people from all over the world. Everyone has a different uh, point of view of the moon. And I have a, a collection of uh, photos of the moon sent from people. Um, all in a slightly different fashion. Can okay, you maybe say how many pictures of the moon have been moon bounced by now? <laughs> well, every, every year we have a, one image of the moon, so um, maybe 20. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a lot of uh, moon bounce, moon. Uh, but they say, well, is there something special about this one that has, you haven't seen in the other images before? Um, usually, the ones I saw, uh, they have always a bit of a landscape, and uh, I think this is the first one I received that, um, as just the moon, and uh, also with the sky. Uh, so the moon is quite small compared to the sky, so um, yeah, I, I quite like that. We, we do see a little bit of landscape in, in the original image, but I suspect when we see the reflected image, <laughs> that's not going to be much less of that. But I'm curious to see how, how sharp the moon will be with respect to the background. Yeah, so we are uh, running a bit late in terms of uh, sending the images forth and back, but I think this is a tradition in your uh, project optics. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so maybe some of the audience have uh, uh, maybe a question or something to say. Oh, we have a question here. I have a question for, for Julia. So we see these images bounce back and they're quite noisy. And now if a signal came from another stellar system, from another intelligence, what is the prospect we would see anything? Because we're so close to the moon and it would be so far from us. Yeah, great question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, it'd be crazy for us to actually to receive a signal that had information in it. So it all depends on how you encode that image. Um, as you all mentioned, this one is uh, uh, coded with analog. Um, you could do digital. Yes. It could be in uh, an unknown alien encoding scheme. So um, it could be binary, um, ons and offs and things like that. So um, I guess it depends on how the information is, is packed into the signal, the radio wave that we're receiving. Um, we would have to figure out how to decode it, yeah. <laughs> basically. Uh, yeah. Mario, I can respond to you. Uh, we are using a, a very primitive uh, application to send uh, such a signal to the moon. 
which was uh, written by, if I'm not wrong, uh, by a Japanese uh, amateur radio. Uh, and is a, a simple FM uh, uh, analog modulation. Uh, the, the window, which is large, uh, no more than two uh, kilocycles, uh, is divided into three portions corresponding to the RGB basic colors, uh, which are then uh, 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 modulated uh, uh, FM, and then uh, the, the, uh, the, the image is reconstructed uh, at the, by the, the receiving point. Uh, but I repeat, it's a very primitive system. Uh, so no uh, control, uh, no check uh, of any kind uh, applied by the transmitter and the receiver. Thank you, Mandel. And that's why we have so much noise against, right? Am I correct? Uh, I, I have to uh, 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 apologize. The big mistake I made before uh, concerning the delay on uh, data transmission. I've been confusing uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the forward and return path with the, uh, the reply from another station, which really takes five seconds. I'm sorry. So, um, if, um, uh, Mario, if you can please quickly see this image again, but in a large screen, uh, just the moment by Kailai. Who is he here? Or the person who submitted this photo? Okay. Um, uh, okay, so if there is a way to maybe make it a little bit bigger, just to show it to everyone here in the auditorium, uh, what it looks like. It, and uh, this pixelated image, they always have a great appeal. Um, I think, <coughs> yeah, a bit bigger, possibly. <laughs> Excellent. Go. Okay. okay. So the moon is here, and um, yeah, yes, fantastic. So uh, if we have maybe time for another couple of images, I would say because it's uh, time to wrap up. Um, I would like also to hear a little bit more from Andrew. Um, and we've been working together on this performance several times. So you are used to all kinds of um, uh, noise by now. And uh, I was wondering uh, how do you feel about it? Each event is always different, right? So I would like to hear from you maybe um, a perspective of, of um, your experience um, on how optics changes. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think it's amazing that every event is different and the images are all unique. This is what makes each and every single, you know, beaming of these of these images uh, uh, a unique event. And I, I, you know what I'm, I'm what strikes me constantly every time I participate in this with you, uh, Daniela, is uh, is that noise that comes back. It's that 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 the the missing information that was once in the original photograph. And then what we, 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 what we get back, there are missing little bits, but yet we can still see what the original uh, image was. But understanding, to me, what is amazing too, is that we understand that that missing information is a part of the dispersion of that signal is because of the craggly surface of the moon, right? It's, it's, not, a, it's not a perfectly smooth surface. What you, the, 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 the effect of that, those craters, those mountains and valleys that exist on the moon is reflected in that image that we see. It's the, the, the true nature of the moon is what Im, is imparted on those returned images. So there's a, there's a whole new layer to, to each of these images that are very different from time and time again from each time we do this, this event. So to me, it just, that's something that's, it's amazing to think, to understand with those images that we're seeing. Yeah, they're not like they're not like what we're used to coming from our smartphones. You know, when we take the picture, this has traveled quite a distance and it's bounced off, and and some of that signal has now dispersed into the universe. It's amazing stuff. Fantastic. Yes, I agree. Do we see the image from uh, Ayuna Park? Uh, Called dark phenomenon. Maybe we can see the original quickly. There we go. Yes, 
So I hope it's being moon powers, but uh, Iona, maybe you can say a few things about it. Yep. You can hold the microphone. I can hold so, it. Yes. Um, one of the things we've been doing uh, within our project is uh, when we've made a body of artwork, we send those images out to our collaborating astronomers for them to write responses. And I'd like to read with this one, a response from Dr. Noam Liebeskind from the Leibniz Institute for Astrophysics in Potsdam. And he wrote of this painting, a detailed examination of the center of our galaxy reveals a chaotic fight between stars of gas and dark matter Small clouds are stripped and ripped apart as they pass too close to dense, compact objects, leaving behind them trails of debris. Red ejecta is spewed throughout the region from dying gargantuan stars. I find that a thrilling <laughs> um, response to one of my paintings. Um, so I'm really interested to see how this particular painting and image becomes striated and spewed and strung out um, in this transmission process. Yes, let's have a look. Can we see it? There it is. Can you see it already in the small screen there? Hopefully you can see it a little bit larger. I think that looks really good actually. Um, there we go. Oh, so what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so there's more contrast in this one, tonal contrast, so that's, um, uh, uh, yeah, it's really fascinating. Where did you this one? Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, there seems to be a lot of green in the images tonight. Um, is there any uh, specific explanation for that? Uh, I the, the, the the contrast of the image is making the difference, uh, as I was mentioning before. Uh, the, the moon is perfect. Uh, the, what we call degradation is, is very low, so the conditions are, are very good. Of course, there is some diffraction, as was mentioning before, but it's, uh, the conditions are pretty good. Uh, the, the point is that uh, my antenna is not big enough to receive perfectly the thing. So. The, the nice thing that is that you can, you must imagine the rest of the the rest of the image. And this is actually the artistic part. Now, maybe we can try again this one uh, because the, uh, the, the system did not synchronize. You want to try again, Nando? Just I think we have running out of time. Sorry, but we do have three more images. So can maybe move on to the next images. Okay. Okay. Start. Okay. He's synchronizing. Uh, no, 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 Mario. No, okay, no, okay, yeah, go to the next. Va bene, okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, so if you can see the original, yeah, there we go. I, I love this project. So, Jenny, can you say uh, what this is about? It's beautiful. Like, oh, everybody else doesn't know. <laughs> so, um, I have bounced uh, an image with Daniela before. And when Daniela was asking for images to send to me, I thought it would be interesting to take the image that I get back and do something with it. And I thought, well, it would be nice to send an object. And um, obviously this is an image of an object, but this is an object that we need specifically for sending to me. And it, it, it kind of ties in with some of the things I've been interested in recently. Um, I read an article about how um, DNA was smeared into the grooves of um, some screws on a, a rocket that was sent into low orbit to see if it would survive um, into space and coming back. And uh, they, they smeared on a, a sort of DNA that they then extracted after the, um, the rocket came back and they um, grew the, the, the DNA in mouse cells. And it was a, a green fluorescence. And so I quite like the idea. This is the, the, the initial sort of speculation. We thought we'd, we'd make this object. It does grow, grow, grow green. It's made with uranium glass. Um, but um, I have to say, I'm quite intrigued with the idea that it was mouse cells that we put it into. So I think once we get the image back, I'm going to alter onto this glass some of the impact that's been sent to me in the back. And there may be some mouse thing that comes in. <laughs> Thanks. So I was very confused when I first saw this, but it's fully glass, right? It, it is, is transparent. Glass, yes. yes. And the rest is just reflection of the sea. So reflection, can we see maybe reflection, how this reflects on the moon?
Oh, there it is already. Excellent. Well. Slightly out of sync, but I think it's still uh, a really recognized image here. So, so. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, maybe. Um, okay, Mario Nando, um, you are our uh, module uh, pilot. How do you say? Unit module pilot. Uh, I have to speed up a little bit. Um, so if we can maybe just uh, as we wrap up with uh, maybe questions from the audience and uh, more comments from our speakers, uh, can we maybe have the, the last two images possibly bounced? So one is sent uh, by uh, one of my um, uh, contacts, um, Manuel Pimenta, and this is a photo of uh, Buzz Aldrin with his wife and daughter. And um, the last one is quite special. I will uh, say something later. And in the meantime, uh, Paul, do we have any questions from our uh, YouTube uh, viewers? Or is there any question or comment from anybody here in the room? Uh, I haven't seen any questions any yet, no. Um, there are some people watching live, but they're, they're not asking questions. They're, they're welcome to do so. Did you get my um, image there, Paul? I don't see it in yeah, yes, I do have it. Uh, if you want, I can. Uh, this one is coming in. Eh? Let's see. Let me bring that up, and I'll, I'll. Uh, uh, let's see. In the meantime, I wonder if Buzz Aldrin knows that he's been sent back to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to go to Mars now, so maybe for him it's not such an adventure. Buzz Aldrin is coming in. Huh? It looks. Good. Uh, I, um, I, you probably saw the photo that was in the announcement of this performance. This is a, a photo that, um, uh, for me, is really the symbol of Vision Move Out. So uh, it was sent to me by uh, Moonwalker, Charles Duke, who left uh, the image of um, the portrait of his family on the surface of the moon. In 1972, and uh, it has been uh, there since then. So it has been uh, on the surface of the moon for the past 48 years. In 2015, uh, Charles Duke sent me this uh, photo, and uh, we sent it to the moon and back. So that's the photo I used for the announcement of this performance. Um, yes, that was a photo I received from Dag uh, tonight, but it was a little bit late to include it in the show, so sorry Dag, we we'll use it some other time. Uh, the last uh, image, uh, number 10, is um, uh, a portrait of uh, Mark Lampi, um, who is, uh, was uh, uh, one of the, the Isle of Lewis's uh, surfers. Mark passed away too soon at his favorite break in Barbas. He was originally from uh, Berwick and came to Louis in 2001 to film the a brilliant surf festival for his film called Rush. So um, one of his friends submitted this photo, um, saying that now it's time for him to reach for the moon. Yeah, it's a bit of a tragic uh, story behind this, but uh... It's still uh, beautiful image to uh, have moon bounds. Yes. Have you had similar similar images sent by people as sort of a memorial? Yes. One time, uh, someone sent me a phone of her father, and um, so yeah, I guess it's a it's a way uh, it's another poetic way for people to connect um, to the unknown. I guess and. Uh, um, so, but this is why it's so special for me to see what uh, people um, send, want to send uh, to the moon and back. It's usually something that uh, is personal, it's close to their heart, or you know, very close to what they do. In this case, artists. Or um, so, yeah, it's interesting. So we'll close with uh, with this image. Uh, so, can we see the moonbound results? It's an already a big screen, so yes. Okay. Nice that. So, any other final words from Daniela? Um, well, I, um, 
I renew the invite to have a, an exchange amongst all of us, uh, whether online or here in the auditorium. And um, so um, I would like to thank all the speakers uh, who are also my connections, personal connections. And um, yeah, it was beautiful to have you all in this panel and uh, to share this journey to the Munabak today. Uh, always a little bit of adventures, and thank you uh, to Mario and Nando for uh, making the journey possible. <laughs> and um, so, yes, um, I, I, that's what I wanted to say. Excellent, yes, and uh, we can uh, close the session. So, thank you here in the audience. <laughs> Thank you for wonderful event. So thank you everybody and uh, well we'll see you next time we have lots of images to uh, to send again. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you guys, good night. Thank you. Hi. <laughs>